Hey everyone, Noodle here with another in-depth look at one of the new rewards from the Season 18 scoreboard. Today, I will deploy, decorate, and review the Raider Lodge. The Raider Lodge has been a highly anticipated prefab building. You can purchase it with tickets once you grind your way through the entire scoreboard. It's on bonus page one. I already own all of the items on the scoreboard as I purchased my ranks minutes after the season update. Many of you asked about how it is that I have access to everything already. That's how. I paid actual money to buy all of these items with the sole purpose of reviewing them for you so that you can decide early on which ones are worth grinding for and saving your tickets for. So let's dive in. In my opinion, the Raider Lodge is the most immersive, attractive, dynamic, and surprisingly easy to decorate prefab building. But as this is Bethesda, it comes with its own quirks and limitations. We'll get to that later on in the show. First, let me deploy the thing, give you a walkthrough, and demo some of my favorite decorating aspects of this build. My first impression of this thing came with a lot of skepticism. It is holy, like Swiss cheese. Many of the walls are missing entirely. A lot of the windows are boarded up. If you joined us live on September 3rd, you heard my initial honest reaction when I saw this building. I was impressed, it looked pretty, but I had my doubts that I would be able to decorate it because the walls are missing. Boy, oh boy, was I pleasantly surprised that I can patch up all these walls. Easy, 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 easy. Granted, if you have fun defenses to work with. If you don't have defense walls to work with, there are other ways to patch up these walls, for instance, with paintings or furniture. But the easiest, friendliest, and most attractive way to do this is with defenses. I used these boarded up defenses that go very well with the style of the Raider Lodge. We have distressed wood here. We have these randomly awkwardly nailed boards onto these defenses. They come in three variations or four variations. Some of them even come with barbed wire and tires. That's a reoccurring design element here on this build. Super easy and friendly to clip these walls to the side of the house. You can board up this entire section so that it looks a little bit less open, a little bit more homey. And once you have that, you can actually put up decorations on the walls like um, mounted heads or paintings or clocks or whatever. I also really like using these creepy haunted Halloween mesh segments. They also come from the defenses. And I was able to double wall this section with my boards and my mesh and also install a door here in this empty area that's not actually a doorway. Restoring walls is the very first thing that I do every time that I take over a building in the wasteland. Many of you have seen my tutorials on how to work with pre-existing structures, and this is very similar. It's like, instead of giving us a perfectly clean prefab, they gave us one of the pre-existing structures that you can actually wander into in the game and put your camp there. And it gives so many different opportunities depending on what kind of material you have to work with and what style you're going for. I also like using these boarded up window wall decorations. I use them a lot. They don't have to go on windows. They can also go just on walls. So this is my number one thumbs up item is being able to repair in air quotes the walls. The other thing that I really liked about this build and the scoreboard in general is that there are many items on the scoreboard that go with this style. We have Raider defenses, we have Raider wall decorations, the spiked wall decorations that are already perfectly matched in style to this building. So if you've been grabbing those along the way on the scoreboard, or if like me, you purchased the whole thing up front and you already have them, then using those is just so easy and again will put your own twist on the building. 
I think one of the greatest things about this prefab is that every single one is going to be unique to the builder. As always, I've put up a full recording of this build up on Patreon, and I'm also sharing it with all the channel members. For those of you interested in seeing how I added every wall, patched up every hole, which decorations came with the house and which ones are mine, and the rest of the prettifying process, please check that out either in the member exclusive upload or over on Patreon. And aside from the raider decorations that we're getting on the scoreboard, I think we've been getting a lot of camp items along the way. I mean, depending on how long you've been playing, but if you've been playing for any length of time and you've been collecting plans for house decor, then you probably already have things that are kind of messed up, kind of roughed up, things with peeling paint, broken things, anything. Like I'm using a lot of Mothman stuff, Mothman cultist stuff, even though this is a raider house. A lot of the torches work here, a lot of the lights work here, the decorations, some of the paintings that we have will work here. There's just so much opportunity for decorating. The other thing that I was completely blown away by is that I was able to use my wall mounted walkways here with a lot more success than I was able to use them in the wall mounted walkways review. If you saw my video from yesterday where I did the tower and the ramps review, I gave both items full thumbs down because the wall mounted walkways are not a building element at all. They're just a wall decor and they're very difficult to make into anything functional. They don't snap, they don't line up, they don't work with the tower. I'm not gonna go into that, go watch that video if you wanna hear me complain for 10 minutes. But here inside the building, them being actual wall decorations, I was able to use them in very functional and very creative ways. For instance, since the roof is kind of a suggestion here <laughs> and Oscap's complaint about this building is that it's always gonna rain inside, I put up one of these wall mounted walkways as a canopy for my raider bed. That's really cool. Using these walkways as canopies, as loft space, as storage space is super cool. And this building is very friendly for that. So putting these things up at different levels and then hanging lights from them, you can use them as shelves. Very impressed with how the wall mounted walkways actually work with this particular prefab house. Another cool thing about this house, and that's actually true for all prefabs, not just this one, but it's still worth mentioning. Prefabs are economical. They save you so much on budget. Just imagine building this thing from scratch. All of these floorboards, all of the walls, even if we could build a roof like that, it would be kind of pricey. By the time you'd be done with this, all the railings on the balconies, the ramps, all of the spikes and the and the tires and everything if we were to build this from scratch that would be it that would be our entire budget but having this already just be there and be one item that you pay for gives us so much space to decorate and actually you don't need a lot of items to decorate here because the house comes with so many integrated decorations already and that's really cool. So you're saving on decorating, but you're also given a lot of decorating elements. So that opens up a whole opportunity for decorating the space around your house. For those of you who watched my last building tutorial, where I used the Ford Fortress set to demonstrate how to build with offsets on inclined surfaces, that's one of my favorite builds so far, but it was so expensive. I'm completely house poor in that camp. I built up that enormous, beautiful structure with offsets and levels and the bridge and a little cookout gazebo. I didn't have any budget left for furniture. I kind of spread out some lights there and put up some plants and called it a day. But it's maxed out on budget. Not here. I am barely into the budget and there's still so much more space. I absolutely love that aspect of prefabs. Now for the oddities and quirks of this build. 
First of all, this is not an original. This is called Raider's Lodge because it's actually the Hunter's Lodge that's been reskinned to look like the Raiders took it over. The original lodge looks like this. As you can see, it's the same exact building, but it's all clean and tidy and all the walls are built up and it has beautiful glass in the windows. This lodge we got as a reward for the Rip Daring and the Cryptid Hunt season. And for the longest time, it was my favorite prefab building. It is gorgeous. Okay, so it's not an original design. It's based on this lodge. What's the big deal, you say? Well, that's kind of what I said. Not a big deal at all. My vision for this show was to start it with a busting out with the new Raiders Lodge and next to it, setting up the original Hunter's Lodge. And I was going to stand in the middle and I had a whole speech prepared being like, on my left, you will see the Raiders Lodge and on my right, you not going to happen. I discovered while filming that scene that you can't actually deploy both of them. The game engine considers this to be the same building, not just the same model building, not the same frame structure, but actually the same building. You can deploy it in its clean version or in its Raider version, but you can never set them side by side in the same camp. It's like, I was already so excited about this thing. I love everything about it. And Bethesda strikes again. There has to be one thing about it that's messed up or glitchy. And there it is. That's your messed up and glitchy part. And the final thing that's kind of in the negative bucket on this building is something that Oscapt will never stop laughing about. He'll never let me hear the end of it. His very first assessment of this lodge, the first time he saw it when I bought it, was it's always gonna rain in this house look at this roof this roof isn't real it's not actually protecting you from the elements it's always gonna rain in your house and it does every time it rains it actually rains in the house it rains on the top floor it rains on the bottom floor it rains in this house so there you have it boys and girls the raider lodge in all its glory all minor complaints and jabs at Bethesda aside, I am in love with this building. It's immersive, dynamic, easy to work with, and can be customized to every builder. Using prefabs is a great way to save on budget and use more decoration in your build. And this particular one comes with so many integrated design elements that you can set up and fully decorate your camp in just minutes and come up with something stunning and professional. I'm a bit bitter about the Lodge Lodge glitch, but let's be honest here. The only reason I wanted to deploy both Lodges was for a five second video clip for this demo. There's no universe in which I would ever actually have both of these structures out in the same camp. So while it's wrong, it's not setting me back in any way. And yes, it rains in the house. That's kind of funny actually. And if I really want to avoid rain, I can also deploy a clear weather station. All in all, appearance and ease of tweaking and decorating this thing still has me all starry-eyed for it. I give this both thumbs up. As far as prefabs go, this is by far my favorite structure to date. So, would I recommend grinding for it? Yes, 100%. If you can get to it, get it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel for more fun info, and remember that you can always watch the full recording of this build over on Patreon or as a channel member. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Noodle Pants, one half of Game Aviator, and until next time, stay safe out there, Vault Dwellers. Shadows creep and sway. Lies a land of rusted dreams where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride with dangers untold and nowhere to hide.